Well, I'm afraid, Uncle, uh, uh, many of the, the Dai in this corner, they interrupt my conversations when I'm having decent conversations. So he doesn't want to. That's fine. That's fine. So, what does it mean to put someone in his stead? Adnan. Someone? What does it mean to put someone in his stead? Okay. This hadith is not saying that the Muslims will be sent to paradise at the expense of the disbelievers. Is it saying that? What does it say? It says, but Allah will admit in his stead. You have the Arabic. No, one second. One second. When it says, would admit in his stead. Yes. In his stead. Who's the his in that sentence? Okay. Are you asking me for my understanding? Yes. What I does, have an understanding. When it says, no Muslim would die, but Allah would admit in his stead. Who's the his in that sentence? Muslim. The Muslim, yes. right. So we can read it this way. No Muslim would die, but Allah would admit um, in, instead of a Muslim, a Jew or a Christian in hellfire. Okay. So okay. where so should the Jew, I will where should the Muslim be going according I, to I this hadith? Respond. Can I have a mic as well? Because our voices are suppressed in your cameras and your... Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, so now, now that we have our own system going. So I will respond to it now. Are you listening? Get gone. Yeah, go on, bring quickly. Go on. So my response to this is, we as Muslims believe when we die, we are going to paradise. So long as we die believers, no, 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 I'm continuing, don't worry, it's a long conversation. I know it's Bob, it's going to be long, right? We, we as Muslims, we believe when we die, mm -hmm. as long as we die in a state of faith, believing in God and his messengers, yep. we will be eventually sent to paradise, having paid for the crimes Muslims might have committed, depending on the crimes. Yeah. Depending on the crimes, they will spend that much time. Yeah. Okay. Whatever crimes they had committed, they will spend uh, the length of time accordingly. Now, disbelievers, those who do not believe in God, one God, one, the emphasis is on one, and his messengers, are they going to paradise? Absolutely not. Listen carefully. Absolutely not. They are going to hellfire. We believe that. It's clearly stated in the Quran. Unashamedly, I'm telling you to your face, if you don't believe in Islam, if you don't believe in Allah and his messengers, including Muhammad, you're going to hellfire. You will burn in hellfire. You. No, eternity, talk to me. Talk to me. Eternity. You believe in the Trinity, you die believing in the Trinity, a false God, you're going to hellfire. And, and you will replace Muslims in hellfire. Okay, you. let me reply. Uh, so that's the answer. Let, 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 let me reply to that. Let me reply to that. Do you see any hesitation? Let me reply no. to that. Adnan, now, now, that's our now, now Adnan, yeah. I gave you the decency of listening to you. Yes. I would expect you to do yeah. the same. So should, shall okay. we time it one minute? No, 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 no. It gets messy. Uh, allow me, it gets messy. Let, let me reply to that and messy. if you want, we can start to time it. Yeah, we, so, no, yeah. Adnan, thank you. Okay, let's try a conversation. Thank you, let's try that. That would be nice. So, in terms of the Christian faith. What we hear from Muslims is that it is not right that Christ should suffer for our sins, that he should bear our sins in his flesh, that he should be our sacrificial lamb. And the Quran has stated in a clear passage that no one should bear the burdens of another. But yet the Hadith state this, and this is from Sahih Muslim 2767. There would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of resurrection with as heavy sins as a mountain and Allah would forgive them and he would place in their stead Jews and the Christians. So the hadiths are stating now, bearing in mind, judgment happens to Muslims and Christians and Jews at the same time. And atheists. And atheists and yeah. pagans. Yeah. We all get judged at the same time. And what Adnan subtly tried to suggest is that the, the, the Muslims would suffer their punishment and then go to heaven. But then in their stead would be placed Jews and Christians. Okay. So he tried to create a sequentiality to it. 
But that's not true according to their concept of judgment. Okay. Everyone gets judged at the same times and what the hadiths are saying is that Muslims will come with sins as heavy as mountains but Allah will forgive them and instead of putting them into hell will put Jews and Christians into hell. Okay. So in other words, Jews and Christians are taking their place. And this is a problem. So can I respond? Well, and I'm just highlighting my point. And this is a problem. What, with the floodlight? It's a problem. <laughs> you see, you're interrupting. Okay. You're interrupting. I'll stop. I'll stop. And you'll complain if I interrupt you. Sure. So we will Continue. start timing Continue. it. We're gonna have a we will start timing it. So you want to start, start timing we, we, will, we will start timing it. So okay. I wanted to then, give you a chance. Then, then you, I wanted then, to then give you, you a chance. Two minutes now. You, no, no, no. You're interrupting still. So now we'll start timing it when you're speaking I'm, next. I'm quiet. Okay. You're interrupting still. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can't take criticism from Muslims about what Christ does on the cross when their own religion has the same concept. And let me say to every Muslim that it is the lie of the Muslim that we don't believe in one God. That is a lie. It is a lie that Muslims spread about Christians to other Muslims and to the gullible. Those that don't accept the offer of Christ's mercy on Calvary, you will have to answer for your own sins. When are you stopping? There you go, you're interrupting, so you well, won't complain. You go, oh no. So you won't complain you wanna, when I interrupt you. you. Talk for 10 minutes? Right, no could we get a timer? Because well, Adnan can't control himself. No, no, no. No, no, no let's no, get a timer because you can't I control think, yourself. I, I, think, I think you don't want to right. do it. No, we're going to time it. We're gonna, we're Can we time it? Right. We're going to time it. Let's get a timer. Would you like to be the timer? Right, start from zero. Right. I'm dealing with it. Right. Adnan, we're going to start with your timer. dealing with it. Relax, relax. I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. I know you well, but Shake with the greatest respect. You had your chance to talk, but you backed out. Let Adnan speak. Are you here to argue or to understand? Are you timing this? All right. We, we, we need a timer, JC. Give your time. Let me handle this, inshallah. Right. Go on, Adnan. No, my turn. We haven't got time yet. Okay. Right. Come and stand where we can see you. Okay. Five minutes. No, no. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Go on, Adam. No problem. No problem. I'm happy with three minutes. Five minutes. Okay. I have the truth, and I'm confident. I don't need time to prove people to prove to people that I have the truth. People can think. Can I see the timer? Now he he started with a he started with a claim. That we, the Muslims, believe that it is wrong for someone to die for the sins of humanity, i.e., Jesus. Right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not what the Muslims are claiming. This is in the Bible. These people don't read the Bible carefully. They put on a Trinitarian lens and read the Bible. When you read the Bible with a Trinitarian lens, you will not see one, you will see three. You will see three. So in the book of Ezekiel, we read that a, a son shall not die for the sins of the father. And the father shall not die for the sins of the son. Is that the Quran? Does that sound like the Quran? No, that's the Bible. So these people, they are throwing beliefs on us or at us, realizing that they, these are their own beliefs. Now coming to the Hadith, he keeps uh, repeating, I already made it very clear. Yes, disbelievers are going to hellfire. And disbelievers will remain in hellfire. Disbelievers like Bob, Trinitarians, who believe in three in one, who believe in one God, in three persons, or three manifestations, three hypostases, three essences, or one essence and three persons. Call it what you like, however you want to paint it. You believe in that, you're going to hellfire, not, not only according to the Quran, but also according to the Bible. I can show that from the Bible. Anyone who believes in a different God to what the Israelites already proclaimed or believed in is going to hellfire, according to the Bible. Jesus, Jesus is telling these Trinitarians that you are a bunch of disbelievers in the Gospel of John. Jesus is talking to a crowd of the Jewish people. In chapter 8, we are told 
he tells the Jewish people that I do not glorify myself. It is the Father who glorifies me, of whom you say that he is your God. Let him know when he's got 15 seconds. Israelites, that your God is Father who is one, not a trinity. Right? And then Jesus says, in the same gospel, talking to the Samaritan woman, in chapter 4, verse 21, that we, the Israelites, worship what we know. You worship what you know not. As salvation is of the Jews. Salvation Time. is of the Jews. Time. Answer my question. Time. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Tell me when I've got 15 seconds, please. Ladies and gentlemen, notice how quickly it took Adnan to run away from the topic. He started off by saying, I don't need time. We could do three minutes, five minutes. I have the truth. Well, if he was so confident, why is it it took him less than three minutes to run away from the topic of the debate and try to change the topic of the debate? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, because Adnan has no answer. And he said to you, he said that the Bible has this concept that the son shall not be killed for the sins of the father. And that is true, that is what the Bible teaches. And that is Jewish law. Jewish law does not punish the sons for the sins of the father. I affirm it, I believe that. But, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. let's just read the hadiths. Some women requested the Prophet to fix a day for them as the men were taking all his time. On that he promised them one day for religious lessons and commandments. Once during such a lesson, the Prophet said, and listen brothers and sisters, listen to this. Notice how they're trying to distract you. Listen to what this hadith says, sister. Listen what to what this hadith says. A woman whose three children die will be shielded by them from hellfire. Did you hear that? You should have listened, Steve. The hadith states that if a woman's child dies, their deaths shall shield her from hell fire. Uh, Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So the death of the children shields the women from hell fire. So what Allah does to one protects the other. So we don't need to hear lectures from the Muslims about this. How are we doing on time? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible in the Old Testament teaches about a sacrificial lamb. That is the Old Testament sacrificial system. Something alien to this foreign prophet, this alien prophet who preached another God, not Yahweh. Jesus Christ dies as the sacrificial lamb for our sins. That is him and he is worthy to be that sacrifice and without accepting that sacrifice you will answer for your own sins. Thank you very much for confirming what I said earlier. He claimed that we the Muslims, he claimed that we the Muslims, he claimed don't, 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 don't. Move away. No, don't stop the time. Keep going. You're allowed that. Just keep going. There's no commotion. You're choosing to stop. Speak to the cameras. Keep the time going. It's a fair debate. I, bro, I had to put up with it. I had to put up with it. I had to. No, no, don't start again. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, Have you start the time again. This, no, he didn't. This guy claimed that the Quran has this belief that someone cannot die for someone else's sins. He was lying. And then, when I challenged him on it, he came back and he confirmed that yes, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that belief is there. He confirmed it. So why mention the Quran? You bunch of liars. Why mention the Quran? 
talk the, Shay, the truth. Shay, why are you telling us? Oh, talk to straight. To talk, talk straight. Don't interrupt. Talk straight. <laughs> Practice talk straight. Talk straight. <laughs> talk straight like Muslims do. Now, his hadith is not working because his understanding is twisted. His Trinitarian lens is showing him an understanding that's not there. I made it very clear. Disbelievers are going to hellfire and they will replace the believers because there are limited spaces in hellfire. Limited spaces in hellfire. Disbelievers will take those spaces and believers will not be there. So what's the problem with that? Now coming to the hadith about the mother. Sorry? Replace. Now, I will prove to you that these Trinitarians, they are blind. When they read, they see three. One, two, three. They don't see one. Four, five, six. The Hadith, he read, he's such a liar. He spun the Hadith to claim something that's not there. He said, those children will shield the mother. The Hadith doesn't say that. The Hadith is saying, the fact that the death of the children has been a test for the mother and she had been patient because of that she will be rewarded and she will be shielded from fire it doesn't say who will shield her the hadith doesn't say who will shield her this trinitarian this trinitarian this disbeliever three minutes let me know at 15 seconds this this disbeliever is claiming that the hadith is saying the children will shield the mother even if that's the case, even if that's the case, okay, how will they choose the mother? Are they being burnt? Are they going to be burnt? Absolutely not. So these liars, these Trinitarians, they will always spin our faith. Don't believe these liars. Read Islam yourself. Read the Quran. Time. Read our hadith yourself and you will see the truth. Oh, Over to you, liar. Okay. Liar, liar. Right. We need someone to time for three minutes. We need someone to time for three minutes. And could you let us both see the clock? Right. Wait, wait, wait. I can't wait, bro. He started the time. All right. The time has started. Stop. We're just waiting for the... We're just waiting for the camera. Right. Ladies gentlemen, now notice how Adnan suddenly, suddenly wanted to start calling Christians liars. But notice how he ignores, ladies and gentlemen, what the Old Testament says about the sacrificial lamb. Anyone who reads the Old Testament will know the Jewish concept of Yom Kippur, the idea that animals are sacrificed and that the burdens of sin are placed upon the lamb. And then they are sent out into the wilderness. The idea of sacrifice is an integral aspect of the Jewish faith. It's an integral aspect to the Jewish faith. How is it that the same, Muslims claim that Allah is the same God. So how is it that he taught sacrifice to all the prophets of Israel and Jesus practiced that sacrifice in the temple? But, ladies and gentlemen, Muslims have no concept of sacrifice in Islam. It's a totally alien concept of sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Christ died for our sins as the sacrificial lamb. He did not die for the father's sins because like the father, he was sinless. So he doesn't break Jewish law. There's no conflict with Jewish law. He dies as the sacrificial lamb. And notice, he accepts that Allah kills the children, and then because the children die, the mother is protected from hellfire because of what Allah did to those kids. That's in your hadiths. Your hadiths that say Muslims shall come with the sins of mountains and Allah will put in their stead Jews and Christians into hellfire. And then he said, but it's not in the Quran. Oh, really? Oh, Adnan. They will bear their own burdens and other burdens. That's what your Quran says. Surah 29, 13.
he was Ladies and gentlemen, you see, he just proved that he's a liar. He didn't lie once, he lied few times. He lied right in the beginning. He said that I said Christians are liars. Did I say Christians are liars? Yes. He said I was a liar. No. 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 I did not say Christians are liars because not all Christians are Trinitarians. Not all Christians are Trinitarians. So ladies and gentlemen, coming to his point, every single time this Trinitarian disbeliever opens his mouth, he lies. Why did he, why did he have to lie? He's lying on his own faith. He's lying on his own faith. He, he was hiding the fact from you that a father cannot die for the sins of the son. And the son cannot die for the sins of the father. So says the Bible, the book of Ezekiel. Why was this liar hiding that from you? Because that concept contradicts the concept of human sacrifice to forgive the sins of humanity. And he said, the God of Islam kills children. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. The God of Christianity not only kills all the children, but his own child. He killed his own son on the cross. Brutally using the Romans. Using the Romans to nail to nail his own son. Who is the who is the son of God? Who is the son of God? Jesus. Jesus is the son of God. So what does God do to his own son? He hands him over to the Romans. Romans take him. They, they nail him, they spit on him, they lash him, they put him to the cross, they nail his hands, they nail his feet, they make him bleed, then they spear him, they spear him, brutally murder him. Where was the God of Christianity when his own son was being killed by himself? And he became an holy. So, so before you talk about the God of Islam, you Trinitarian liar, you, you, I'm talking to you, not the Christians, I'm talking to you. Okay. Jesus became an holy and holy man in the Bible. You need to understand that our Hadith and our Quran cannot possibly make sense to you. You know why? Because you're blocked. The Trinity is blocking your brain. Until you remove the veil or the curtain of Trinity that shows you three, that shows you three, you will never see one. Remove the curtain and the lens of the Trinity, the contaminated, dirty lens of the Trinity. You will see the oneness of God, the beauty of Tawheed, the beauty of oneness. When he goes on the cross, you cannot, see, bro, you cannot see what Jesus saw. You cannot see what Moses saw, what Abraham saw, and what Muhammad finally saw. You will never see it because you are a bunch of Trinitarians. And over to you. I'll give my time in charity to you. Go ahead. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. You all heard Adnan say um, that we Christians are blinded by the Trinity, but the Trinity has nothing to do with this debate about Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, Adnan just wants to get off the topic and he wants to get off the topic because he is embarrassed by his own hadiths. And why should he be embarrassed? Because Adnan and other Dayi who come to this park attack Christianity by saying, how could God allow his own son to die? How could God kill himself on the cross? Which demonstrates his ignorance of what Christians believe and his ignorance about what Christians teach. We do not teach that God killed himself on the cross. We teach that God allowed his humanity to die on the cross and he laid it down. It is more akin, ladies and gentlemen, for you to understand the difference. It's not like a man hanging himself on a tree. It's more like a man seeing that you're going to get run over by a truck and pushing you out of the way. We don't turn around to such people and say he committed suicide. We say that he rescued the victim. That's what we say. And if you're going to talk about my faith, Adnan, at least try to represent it properly. But I understand being a Dai means that you lie because without lies, Islam dies, ladies and gentlemen. But the Hadith does say that Allah took the lives of the children because who else would take the lives of the children? One minute. Obviously Allah does. 
No one else has that power. But then it says in the scripture, it says in this hadith, sorry, that a woman whose three children die will be shielded by them from hellfire. Well, who sends you to hell and for how long? Allah. So Allah is accounting for the fact that your children died and he's shielding you from hell because of that. Ladies and gentlemen, the hadith state very clearly, as we have shown, that Allah is putting instead of Muslims for their sins into hell, Jews and Christians, and the Quran states, I'll read it again, they will bear their own burden and other burdens along with their own. Ladies and gentlemen, this Trinitarian disbeliever is proving me right repeatedly. You know what? I think I don't even have to speak anymore because if I let him speak more and more, he will make my case for me. And he's been doing it. He's been doing it amazingly. He's a better debater for Islam than Adnan Rashid will ever be. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me clarify something. He is obsessed with God killing children. You know why? Why? Because that's what he reads every day in the Bible. You go to. You go to. The book of Samuel, okay, ah, first Samuel, first Samuel. right? First Samuel, yes, you know, you see, naughty, naughty, naughty boy, you know, right? God, God commands the genocide of the children, specifically mentioning children. Now they're going to come back and say, oh, that's the Old Testament. The Old Testament God was barbaric. The New Testament God is civilized. The liberal, secular God of the Western world. The New Testament God is more worthy of worship. So we take them to the New Testament God. What is this New Testament God going to do? In the book of Revelation, we read when Jesus returns, the second coming of Jesus, this same God who was killing children in the Old Testament is going to do the same thing again. He is he's going to come and he's going to kill the children of prostitutes, in particular the children of Jezebel. It is there in the book of Revelation. Now this Trinitarian liar needs to address this. Why is your New Testament and the Old Testament God so obsessed with killing children. We don't find anything like that in the Quran, in Islam. What do we find in Islam? Ladies and gentlemen, our Prophet tells us, do not, one minute, under any circumstances, kill women and children, even in conflict. Even in conflict, when you are in war, do not kill women and children. Sayyid al-Bukhari, Kitab al-Jihad. There is your reference. Okay, what does the Bible say? Bible says, go and kill children specifically. Kill them, target them. Not only the New Testament, it is also in the Old Testament. So why is this God obsessed with targeting children? Targeting children. In fact, dashing, dashing, dashing the heads of children against rocks. In the book of Psalms, this guy, this guy has put himself in a pile of, I'm not going to say what. So ladies and gentlemen, 10, 9, 8, charity to you. Thank you. Ready? So ladies and gentlemen, notice how our Dai friend Adnan wants to get away from the topic. We're talking about the judgment of hell. We're talking about the double standards of the Dai who criticize Christians for believing that Christ is our sacrificial lamb. Not that he died for the sins of the Father, because that's not what we believe, but that he died for our sins as a sacrificial lamb. That is what we believe. Now, ladies and gentlemen, He's thrown his own prophet under the bus. Why, Why ladies and gentlemen? Why? Let me just tell you what it says in Sunan Ibn Majah 2839. What does it say? Saab bin Jathama, forgive me for mispronouncing the name, said, The prophet was asked about the polytheists who are attacked at night and their women and children 
are killed. And what did Mohammed say? Did he say no, we won't attack at night because the women and children will be killed? Did he say that? No. What did he say? They are from amongst them. Thank you very much, Adnan. You just threw Mohammed under the bus, ladies and gentlemen. Let us look further. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, that we have shown that there is a contradiction in their Quran. And we have shown, ladies and gentlemen, that their hadiths demonstrate that Allah does take into effect what happens to you and applies it to other people. He does it with the deaths of children and he does it with Jews and Christians and the sins of Muslims who are so high that they are the sides of mountains. And furthermore, I'll read the reference again because Adnan has ignored it three times so far, ladies and gentlemen. The Quran states, they will bear their own burdens. So they have their own burdens and burdens along with their own. So that means other burdens, not their own. And on the day of judgment, they will be called to account for their falsehoods. So in other words, the Quran is stating that Jews and Christians will bear the sins that are their own and those of others, just like the Hadith suggests. Time up. Ladies and gentlemen, this Trinitarian disbelieving liar proved me right again. I'm sorry for using this language because I have no respect for these people. You will never see me using this language with respectful Christian scholars whom I have debated repeatedly around the world. I only use this language with these unfortunate, uh, when is, when is you know, done? unfortunate individuals. I'm not going to use any other language for these people. So he quoted a hadith. Now, amazingly, these people, when they quote that hadith from the very same chapter, if they read down, if they went down, if they will find the hadith where the Prophet is specifically saying, do not kill women and children. So what are we dealing with here? How do we understand this hadith? So when his companions came to him, asking him that we found women and children among the dead, and they were clearly disturbed because the hadith says so. They were disturbed. So the Prophet said, hum min hum. These are the Arabic words. You could not avoid that collateral damage. They were in a war zone. So long as you did not target them, there is no sin on you because they, but as for targeting them, he made it very clear in Kitabul Jihad, in the same chapter from where he read this liar. If he read down, he would see the Prophet said specifically, do not kill women and children. On the other hand, this individual doesn't want to defend his scripture. I raised points. God is specifically targeting children in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter chapter 15, 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 3. Verse 3. Yes, yeah, the classic, the classic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Numbers 31, 17 and 18. Yeah, Numbers 31. Numbers yeah, yeah. chapter 31. Amazing. These people will never defend it. No, you know the Bible he knows. It's the only bit of the Bible he knows. No, 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 don't interrupt me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, he is already pulling out more hadiths to spin them so that he doesn't have to defend the Bible. He thinks by reading the hadith literature he's going to save the bible what about your scripture you trinitarian disbeliever what about your scripture what about the bible targeting children there is nothing in the quran in the hadith where you can show me specifically where the prophet said or allah said target children in the bible we have specific verses target children in the old testament the references are there first samuel 15 3 and the book of numbers chapter 31 seconds. Um, verse 17, yeah. and in the book of Revelation, God, Jesus, when he comes back, he will specifically target the children of Jezebel. Why? Time. And respond. Time. Respond. Don't read these. Respond. Three minutes. Three minutes. Start. Start it from the beginning, please.
from the beginning. Oh, start it from three minutes, please. He so just restarted. three seconds. Can you please start? No, 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 no. No, she's there taking over from him. Thing. Okay. He needs those three seconds. Come on. Yeah. Ready? Just three minutes. Just, just, just start. Just start. Just, just press start. Just start. Yes. There, you there go. we go. Thank you. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sister. So, ladies and gentlemen, why is Adnan floundering in this discussion? For those of you that came late, let me just actually remind Adnan the sequence of events. Because Adnan has clearly become the entertainer this evening rather than the debater. And he's going for cheap shots rather than sticking for the, the, the topic. Indeed, as he admits. I was debating a sheikh who ran away by about the fact that Allah punishes and Allah takes the burdens and the effects of other people and applies it to others on the day of judgment. That's what that debate was about. And Adnan burst into that conversation. And now he wants us all to debate the Old Testament and what happened to the Canaanites. No, we aren't changing the topic because you're in a sticky situation, Adnan. We're not running away from the topic because you don't have answers. All he has done is assert that I'm a liar. All that he has done is assert that I don't understand the text. All that he has done is throw up red herrings and try to change the topic about the Trinity or about Israel's conquest of Palestine rather than wrestle with the words of his own literature. And why does he want to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Why? Because he has been beaten for the last hour of conversation. That's why, ladies and gentlemen. Don't interrupt, Adnan. This is what your hadith state. Well, thank you, thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they're using this to distract from my time. They're using this to distract from my time. It's good Muslim tactics and the Dai are all in on it. Christians learn lessons. Look at how they're behaving. This is what their hadith says. When it will be the day of resurrection, Allah would deliver to every Muslim. So there you go. It's like parcel force. He takes a Jew and a Christian and he puts them to a Muslim and he says, listen, a Jew or a Christian and say that, that's the Jew or the Christian, is your rescue from where? From hellfire. That's what their hadith say. So the Jews and the Christians are being used by Allah to rescue Muslims from hell according to their hadiths. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, is it time? Time up, yes, three minutes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, time up, three minutes. I couldn't see, but fair enough. Stop my time now. Oh, I'm done. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I am indeed an entertainer because this is very entertaining for me. This discussion is indeed very entertaining for me and I'm very sure it's entertaining for everyone else watching and listening to this guy waffle. Not once did he try to defend the Bible and I'm continuously defending my literature. I stand by every single hadith he has quoted. I stand by it. I believe in it. I cherish it, I celebrate it, and I love it. You know why? Because I know what they mean. The Hadith keeps repeating that the Jew and the Christian will go to hellfire for a Muslim. It's very clear that the disbelieving Jews and disbelieving Christians like him, the Trinitarians, they will go to hellfire. I'm standing by that. Am I, am I running away from that? No! Am I watching, am I watching, yes. am I watching down my face? Absolutely no. not. I'm standing by that. The disbelieving Jews, the disbelieving Christians, but then the Quran tells us something amazing that those Jews and those you, Christians who this three believe minutes? in Allah, this three minutes. who believe in Allah, Fala Khawfun Alayhim, Fala Hum Yahzanun, Surah Baqarah, Chapter 2. The Quran tells us those Jews and those Christians who believe. There is no fear for them and there is no harm to them. So what is this liar doing now? He's trying to put all the Jews and all the Christians in hellfire, which is not the case. Those Jews, 
those Christians who believe in Allah, who believe in God, they're not Trinitarians, they're not pagans, they're not mushrikeen, they're not disbelievers, they are going to paradise. We believe that. The Quran tells us that. When they believe, they go to paradise. What is this liar trying to do is, he has one hadith, he's obsessed with it, and he's, uh, he's going on about it. One minute, one minute, one minute. Oh, okay. So, I got the time. so, ladies and gentlemen, why is he not defending the Bible? I have clarified repeatedly. I stand by the hadith that disbelievers will go to hellfire and replace Muslims. I'm saying that. There you go. Am I, am I, hello. Am I running away? Thank you, Ali. Well done, Ali. Well done, Ali. Thank you. Well done. Okay. Okay. Am I, you did it. I am not running away. But this guy, for some reason, is not talking about the Bible. How come? Bible. God, God targeting children, killing innocent children. Why is God? And he's what? He won't answer. What? 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 No response. Answer no response. Can you? Go now I want the audience answer. to get the answer from him. Right now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I don't blame Adnan from running away for the debate. And why is he running away from the debate? Because the debate that he interrupted, the debate that he insisted that he would come into, and you can see the full version of it on SoCo Films, ladies and gentlemen, was a debate about the judgment, as the debate about the judgment of God on Judgment Day, and the fact that God takes what he does to others and their sins and places them on to Jews and Christians or Muslims. And the reason why Adnan wants to change the debate about Canaanite conquest is because he does not have an answer. And he, all he did, ladies and gentlemen, is to affirm that he believes, don't interrupt Adnan. All that he did is affirm that he believes it. That is not answering the criticism. But why go on any further? He's already admitted that my criticism is true. So I will spend my last minute and 30 seconds talking about the only way, brothers and sisters, that you will escape the judgment seat of God. And notice how the Muslims are behaving. Notice how the Muslims are behaving. Notice how the Dai are behaving. Christians, Christians, learn. Learn from these professionals. Learn from these professionals, Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, the reality is that we will all stand before the judgment seat of God and we will have to answer for our sins unless we accept the mercy of God that has been freely given to us in Christ through Christ. You can either take that check to cancel your debt to the bank and to cash it, or you can go and take your debt to God and pay for it yourselves. Forgiveness has been given liberally and freely, and you, Adnan, will answer for your sins and your blasphemies against the Trinity and your lies against Christians when you say we worship three gods. If you do not accept that free mercy given to you by our Lord Jesus Christ. So Adnan, let's do one more round and then we stop. Ladies and gentlemen, have I responded to every yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. Have I responded to my claims about the Bible once? No! That wasn't the debate! No. That wasn't okay. the debate! That wasn't the debate, but you brought the questions. 
You brought the points. You dragged no, the didn't. points into the discussion. You did. And you I did. Responded no, to the, I you responded did. to every single hadith you brought up. I responded to the very first hadith. No, you, you didn't. That, you did. That, no, you didn't. Dis, that disbelievers will replace the believers. I responded to it. You brought up something yeah. about children being killed in war, and I responded no, to I it. No, I didn't. You, you did. Brought, you you brought, did. You brought Do up, the flashback. You, you got it in the wrong order. A mother being shielded for the deaths of her children. That's I what your hadith say. I responded to it. No, but you didn't. When I, mentioned, when I mentioned something from the Bible, you got deaf, dumb, and blind. You don't respond. Come why on, is God... Not the topic of the conversation, God, Adnan. Why Changing God, the topic. No, 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 you're interrupting me. Why is God... Well, why is about God, the children, yeah? Next why one. is God... Yeah, you talk about the children. No, 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 you talk about the talking Why children, is God... He hasn't answered God. one point. He hasn't answered children, one point. He hasn't answered you're, one point. No, interrupting me. But, I'm not. I'm talking but, to him. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am done with this guy. I've made my You were done at the start, Adnan. Those of you who have sense... Who have sincerity, whom God has blessed with one minute, a, a, a good soul, you will see where the truth lies. There is only one God. Crazy, yeah. I know, right? And, and He alone deserves to be worshipped. Like, and that's not the Trinity. He's got all his pros here, God. and he still couldn't argue. That God still couldn't is argue. Not his a true God. God. That God ran does from not the whole exist. Day, the whole that time. God came about in yeah. the fourth century. The Christians for the first 300 years, they were debating this God. How can you debate? That's a lie, and you'll answer for that on Judgment 300 Day. years, these people were debating, and then they carved a God. In the late 4th century, That's a lie, and you'll pay for that on Judgment Day. They decided that God has three persons. And all That's three a lie, persons and you'll pay for that on Judgment Day, bro. With independent personalities, independent minds. A personality has an independent mind. So God, who is one, he has three persons, three Independent mind. <laughs> right. He's still game. trying to change oh, the subject. One God. He's still this trying to change the subject. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm done with this guy. I have nothing more to say, and I'm not interested in talking to him anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right then. So let's do it. Let's do a wrap up. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Right. If you've got a microphone and you've placed it on me, please don't forget your microphone. So, ladies and gentlemen, what you saw is Adnan, for about 45 minutes or 40 minutes, flounder around a topic. He tried to change it onto the Trinity. He tried to change it onto the conquest of Canaan. And he never dealt with the criticism. All he did is accuse me of being a liar and then say he affirms what the Hadiths believe. But he didn't address any of the points that I raised. And what was the point that I raised? The point that I raised was that the Hadiths and the Quran teach that Allah is going to take the sins of some and put others in hell because of them. That Jews and Christians will be the rescue of Muslims from hellfire. And he does affirm that in this debate. I don't know whether it was a slip of the tongue. No, he, did, he, did he did say it, and hopefully JC will use his flashback. Yeah. I stand by every single hadith he has quoted. I stand by it, I believe in it, I cherish it, I celebrate it, and I love it. Because the reality is, how can Muslims criticize Christianity for our belief that Christ is the sacrificial lamb when they have a similar belief in their texts. And he lied about Christianity. He said that we're saying that the son pays for the sins of the father. We haven't taught that. The father is sinless and the son is sinless. So they're not paying for one another's sins. Christ is the sacrificial lamb and he takes away our sins. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the only way that any Muslim will escape the judgment of Christ by accepting his freely given offer of forgiveness on the cross. It's given freely, it's given liberally. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You didn't do anything to earn it. It is just there in your back pocket and you can cash it at any moment in time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. Cut!